Hi, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture. Now, if you remember in the last uh, uh, lecture when we took an example of the uh, lithography and how to pattern the uh, aluminum using a standard lithography process and we also looked at why PCVD can be used uh, for material like aluminum uh, which will get which has a lower melting point and uh, this PCVD or, or from the uh, given CVD techniques like uh, uh, LPCVD and then MOCVD and then PCVD why we choose PCVD the reason is because at a lower temperature around 100 degree centigrade or around 200 degree centigrade we can deposit uh, uh, materials like silicon dioxide, silicon nitride and so on. And then we, uh, uh, I told that let us see uh, a bit of etching techniques, right, where how to etch the uh, material uh, for creating a diaphragm. Uh, there are multiple etching techniques, wet etching and dry etching. And then uh, also by etching, we can do a micro machining, which is a bulk micro machining and surface micro machining. Right. So, today's uh, uh, topic is on how to fabricate micro sensors uh, part 3 where we are looking at uh, the etching techniques. So, when you see uh, a bulk micro machining, bulk micro machining uh, like I said we uh, divide etching into two techniques one or two, two ways one is wet and second one is dry okay. wet etching and dry etching. Now, wet etching requires chemical dry etching requires gases. Wet etching can be isotropic again depends on the crystal orientation uh, and can be anisotropic while dry etching is isotropic anisotropic again in anisotropic it is a plasma or it is a process dependent and generally we use um, fluorine blaze plasmas where in isotropic we have BRF3 and XEF2. Anisotropic in wet etching we use alkaline uh, etchants while for isotropic we will use the acidic etchants. So, before we for dive little bit deeper into the etching right we should know some terms such as the aspect ratio, selectivity, edge rate, edge profile and isotropy. What is aspect ratio? The ratio of height to lateral dimensions of the edge microstructures that means what is the height and what are the lateral dimensions. So, the ratio of uh, height to lateral dimension is a aspect ratio. Selectivity, ability of the process to choose between the layers to be removed and the interleaving layers. Okay. So, let us see. For example, assume that this material is a photoregist and after you cure the photoregist or soft bake the photoregist and you expose the photoregist with UV light and you develop the photoregist and you hard bake the photoregist this is the pattern that you get right this one is what you get after processing. Now, if I dip this wafer and you assume that this one this green color is silicon dioxide. Okay. So, if I dip this wafer dip this wafer in SiO2 agent what is SiO2 agent? SiO2 agent is buffer hydrofluoric acid. So, if I dip this wafer in SiO2 agent, what will happen? The SiO2 layer will get etched, is not it? You see here, but the photoregist will not get etched, it will st it is still protecting the layer below it. So, it is still protecting silicon dioxide below it. Now, when we say that photoregist is not getting etched at all is a wrong statement because it gets etched, but the etching rate of photoregist is way lower compared to the material which has to be etched uh, using a particular etchant. So, in this case the etching rate of silicon dioxide uh, is much more compared to etching rate of photoregist. Thus, photoregist can work as a mask or you can say that the selectivity of the photoregist uh, is better. Etching rate, etching rate is the speed with which the pro process progresses. Edge profile, slope of the edge wall hmm, is the edge profile. So, you see here this is the etching rate, how fast the material is etched right from the standard given thickness of the substrate. 
n isotropy n isotropy is 1 minus ratio of r lateral by r vertical right how much lateral etching occurs versus vertical etching occurs right so this is the n isotropy that we can uh, define okay so these are the some of the terms that you need to uh, remember so let us understand the some of the fundamentals okay so there is a chemical etching there is a physical etching and then there is a chemical and physical both combined okay so the uh, uh, selectivity uh, the etching rate and the damage to the material if you take these three parameters then chemical etching is isotropic etching as you can see from the from the figure which is here the sputtering can also be used to take out the uh, the atoms so by bombarding the ion the atoms are dislodged and that can all that will be an anisotropic etching so we will see uh, a different anisotropic etching process finally there can be the reactive ion etching which is an isotropic etching anisotropic etching and if you compare all three right this is third one this is second and this is the first one or you can say here first one then the etching rate of the chemical etching is higher compared to the remaining two selectivity is high compared to remaining two uh, damage is low compared to remaining two so when i say remaining two is second and third we are comparing with process one now this is isotropic etching you can see example when you etch this particular uh, material either it is isotropic it can be directional etching or it can be vertical etching which is the anisotropic etching. So, in the uh, sputtering process or physical sputtering which is a ion mill plasma sputtering uh, the ion isotropy is extremely high the pressure required is low less than 10 milliliter the selectivity is poor and the high beam energy is required to dislodge the atoms from the substrate. But in case of plasma etching low anisotropy high pressure uh, very good selectivity and low beam energy. One case of RIE which is a dry etching technique again which is this all three are actually dry etching okay uh, physical sputtering or plasma etching or reactive etching are the dry etching techniques and when you use chemical it becomes wet etching techniques. So, for wet etching suppose you are uh, using the uh, you are want to etch silicon then for silicon you have two different uh, wet etchants one is TMH tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide second is potassium hydroxide or KOH. KOH is used at 80 degree centigrade to MH generally room temperature this is neurotoxic neuro n e u r o toxic this is not uh, the uh, uh, this we get smooth wall the walls are smooth here the walls are rough okay so these are the some of the uh, quick uh, understanding about if i go for wet etching which chemical to use and what are the advantages of using that particular uh, chemicals so in silicon etching we can use two different chemicals when it comes to wet etching koh and tmh and each has its own advantages or limitations Now, if you want to know that what is the uh, how the etching is done right. So, it is like cavity in 100 silicon with a square mask film opening oriented parallel to 110 right. So, you can see that when you uh, open this window and you want to see the, if the final final etching depth or the base is W B then what is the opening window W O ok. So, then if you want to calculate that then this is the equation that the final uh, width uh, uh, or the window that you get is the W B is given by W O minus 2 uh, by cot 54.7, 54.7 is a degree that is created uh, while you edge uh, the 100 oriented silicon wafer. And the cavity is defined by the 111 direction uh, planes 
and this plane generally uh, the etching is slower compared to 100 which is a floor plane with fast etching and final shape depends on the mask geometry etching time and the shape of cavity can be truncated pyramid v groove or pyramid as i told there are different pro, uh, etchants that are used kos tms edp edp is not no longer uh, exclusively used and <coughs> you can have so where this edge will where the etching will stop at what step so then you can use boron uh, doping because when you take a silicon wafer right and if you let us say uh, you dope the boron till till here from the back side alright and you let us say you edge the wafer then the wafer will edge stop here because uh, uh, the boron which is p plus plus will not get etched into uh, using this uh, etchants. So, boron can be used uh, as a etch stop here the process will stop because the boron is there boron cannot be etched by the etchant. There are some of the examples where we can see different shapes uh, and how it looks like right you can see a step here which is right over here right uh, very clear step very nice and then you can see a cantilever beam that is uh, etched uh, using the wet etching process right. Uh, so, this is what we can get ok. We can fabricate different cantilevers, we can fabricate different switches uh, DC switch, RS, RF switch and so on and so forth. So, when you talk about dry etching then can be physical or chemical process or both and beam etching a physical etching process there are gaseous chemicals etch, plasma etch, reactive and etching and DRI. DRI is to create uh, 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 bulk micro machining or etching the bulk of the silicon uh, uh, wafer then generally we prefer DRI technique. Uh, the example uh, of uh, this silicon uh, etching is C S I plus C F 4 gives S I F 3 which is voltage nature plus chlorine. So, if I if I understand from the uh, sticking coefficient uh, versus the uh, how the, uh, the adsorbed species leaves right from the site then you can say that most of the adsorbed species uh, left leaves the adsorption site without doing anything then you can say that the uh, this s uh, is less than less than less than 1 but when the reaction uh, uh, so in this case if you see that if it is less than 1 then uh, the the final profile is different but if it is equal to 1 then you get a very nice anisotropic profile ok. Uh, now let us understand the plasma etching ok. So, plasma etching first is that there is a vacuum in the chamber here and there are two plates uh, electrodes uh, we can say plates or electrodes. So, you can see electrode 1 and electrode 2 and then you have a RF power that goes in right and then there is a ground there is a matching network RF generator and then you have the uh, plasma sheets. Uh, so, uh, there is a gas in and then there is a gas out. So, uh, the inlet and outlet where gases that are used for plasma etching are argon CF4 and O2. So, the RF frequency is 13.56 megahertz, the plasma contains positive ions and neutral species which is bombarded on the target layer uh, and then uh, when they are bombarded in target layer it, it uh, so ions bombards the target layer and the atoms are dislodged from the uh, material uh, and thus creating the etching. This process is highly directional but is as it is only physical process selectivity is poor right. So, uh, to overcome the problem related to selectivity chemical processes are to be introduced. So, reactive ion etching is used to achieve directional etching with good selectivity. Now, in case of plasma etching only gases are used as you can see here right, but if you go for some chemical of course, uh, you can uh, have this as a chemicals also, but the point is that if you add the chemical etching then the selectivity will improve over just using the plasma. So, for etching photo uh, photo is O2 uh, so that is why these chemicals that are used. So, oxygen is used uh, uh, for etching photo digest or you can say oxygen plasma system. Uh, then for other materials halides such as Cl2 or CF4 and HBr is used and sometimes H2, O2 and Ar may be added to the etching process. This is a mechanism by which you can etch the uh, material as you can see that there is a uh, free radical uh, 
created and then that will either dislodge the atom and or will react with the film and or it will adsorb from the film. Uh, so, if it is dissociation then you can see that C f 4 plus electron you see f 3 plus fluorine plus electron this dissociative ionization then we have ionization then we have excitation and we have recombination. So, there are several ways uh, or uh, in which the typical reaction and precis present in plasma uh, and the uh, plasma etching is shown. Uh, so, in, 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 in a way we have four uh, five main uh, re, uh, reaction processes. One is the dissociation, second is dissociative ionization, third one is ionization, fourth one is excitation and fifth one is recombination. Just to understand again do not worry about too much about the equations, but there are five different types of uh, processes. Now, if you talk about reactive ionizing particle, there are chlorine nature, there are fluorine nature and in, in case of the, uh, the chamber it looks almost kind of similar whether you are using chlorine or fluorine as a gas. These are the reactive and etching systems and you can see again here that there are uh, uh, electrodes the process gas is uh, passed through the chamber initially the vacuum is created. Uh, the helium is used for the backside cooling because the plasma will heat the substrate and if there is a material on the substrate that will also get heated. We have to be selective uh, and be careful that the material is not too much heated so as to uh, create the uh, other reactions or also it should not get affected. Uh, there is a RF power, so we are using the 13.56 megahertz uh, frequency and then finally the byproducts are uh, sent through the pump to the outside or exhausted. So, reactive ion etching is a combination of physical etching and chemical etching. High and controllable anisotropic etch rate can be obtained or as it includes chemical reactions to etch, the selectivity of reactive ion etching is extremely high. Okay. So, that is the advantage of RIE. Uh, the HN gas is introduced into the chamber, RI power is used to generate plasma, reactive species are generated in plasma. Uh, the radicals helps in chemical reaction and ions are used to bombard physically. You can see here, so the plasma the ions are bombarded onto the substrate and when the bombardment occurs the, uh, the reactive species is diffused onto a sample and is absorbed by the surface. The chemical reaction occurs and the reactant species creating volatile byproduct that is exhausted from the chamber. So, it takes the atoms reactions and then it takes out and it is exhausted through the pump here. So, this is the inlet input or inlet, this is the outlet. So, uh, again let us understand uh, the reactive ion etching process. So, in RI the HN reacts with the target material and alongside with the volatile byproduct and inhibitor layer is also deposited. Inhibitors are the H byproducts that impede further reactions. Okay. So, you can see here there is a mask film, uh, first it is etched, then the inhibitor layer is deposited, then again it is etched, again the inhibitor layer is deposited, again it is etched, again inhibitor layer is deposited. So, this, this keeps on forming, right. Why, what is the role of inhibition layer? So, that the side walls are protected. You see the side walls are protected and the only the, uh, the etching area, right, and it keeps on etching further down like this in a vertical direction. The lateral direction the walls are kind of protected. So, ions are bombarded to that inhibitor layer at the bottom of the profile to remove it and that helps in further downward etching. As inhibitors are removed from the side walls, later etching can be stopped as I already told you. Inhibitor deposition rate may be fast compared to the edge rate or may be relatively slow compared to the edge rate. So, again on the left side uh, which is this particular uh, process right let us say this process is process number 1. The, uh, the inhibitor deposition rate is faster while in case of process number 2 the etching rate is faster compared to the inhibition rate. So, you have different final profile ok this is number 2. Now, we talked about reactive ion etching. What about deep reactive ion etching? In deep reactive ion etching uh, uh, the etching helps in etching a structure with a high aspect ratio very important ok and uh, the process uses a switched gas scheme that includes both passivation and edge step. So, once etching is of course, then a passivation layer is formed again there is a edge and it is commonly known as a Bosch process. 
A typical DRA system consists of inductively coupled power source to provide high density plasma. It also has a uh, independent substrate power bias to edge directional ion bombardment during the step. Finally, it, uh, a protected layer of polymer is formed with the help of C4 F8 uh, which is also called as octofluorocyclobutene and this is the gas which is used for the passivation step uh, and it deposits on the substrate in a conformal manner uh, similar to PECVD. This is followed by the edge step by a control flow of SF6, SF6 is called sulfur uh, hexafluoride and that is the material to edge the silicon. So, if you see during this step the side walls of silicon trench are relatively protected by CF, uh, C4F8 uh, induced polymer layer, but the bottom layer starts edging. So, the bottom of the trench is also coated with polymer, but the directional ion bombardment right it removes the layer and then etching takes place by means of the reaction. The iterations of this passivation cycle edge cycles allows the desired and break features to be etched. You can see here silicon then we use the SF6 uh, to etch then we have C4F8 right as a passivation layer which is here C4F8 SF6 and then we keep on doing it again SF6 again C4F8 uh, sorry C4F8 then again SF6 and so and so forth okay and so and so forth. So, we keep on etching the silicon in this direction and create the protecting layer on the walls of the etching step. So, if you want to compare wet versus dry etching, wet etch processes can be batch process, dry etch is a single wafer or we few, few wafers process at the one time, wet etch process are limited feature size of 3 micron, fine etch feature size can be of can be processed in case of dry etching because wet etch is very fast ok. So, it is difficult to have few nanometers of etching. Wet etch can be used to remove sacrificial layers present in MEMS devices um, and we will take an example. Uh, well, in the case of uh, difficult to fabricate sacrificial layers using MEMS device, it can be used for photo resist stripping, wet etching is also used for resist stripping, so both can be used. Finally, the wet etching is low cost because you are using chemicals, it has a good through output, good out throughput because uh, we can use many wafers at a time, it has good selectivity. However, if you want to get a highly anisotropic uh, uh, etching, then you can go for dry etching. Uh, it is costly, but the output is uh, or throughput is average because you can use only a one wafer or a few wafer at a one time. Okay, so, with this thing uh, we will we will stop and uh, I will quickly uh, uh, show it to you how the uh, wet etching, uh, how the dry etching uh, creates a diaphragm and in case of uh, surface micro machining how you can create a diaphragm. So, bulk and surface micro machining I will uh, talk about uh, or we will just briefly see in the next class before diving into the fabrication of neural implants. So, till then uh, I will see in the next class. Uh, and we will talk about neural implant fabrication, bye.